so a very warm welcome to everyone uh, who is who is here online with us uh, this webinar is organized by seek mentor uh, we are an online platform that aim to make uh, quality mentorship uh, more accessible and personalized uh, i am sahil bey and i will be your uh, host for today i am an i am bangalore alumnus uh, in our last webinar uh, career insights into finance we explored the various uh, the finance sector and the various roles uh within uh, which one can pursue in the finance sector uh today we will bring you the fifth webinar of the career insight series which is on general management uh general management is one of the most popular careers after graduation or post graduation um a wide variety of roles responsibilities and the freedom to work with different departments over time are one of the i've seen as one of the most favored uh, traits about this role so today we will try to understand more uh, what exactly general management is what is the experience in these roles how to pursue a role in general management and what kind of background uh, do recruiters look for uh, and uh, today uh, we have our mentor with us uh, piyush i'll just add him to the call just waiting for piyush to get added Hi Sahil, can you hear me? Hi Piyush, can you hear me? Yes, yes, it's loud and clear. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, Sahil, can you hear me? Hello. Ah, uh, I think there's some lag. Ah. Uh... Is it better now? Yeah, hi. Hi Sahil. Can you hear me now? Uh I think there is some net issue you try just softly restart my wifi. Okay. Is it at your end or my end? Uh I'm just checking if it is there from my end. Uh yeah, I I'm just a moment guys yeah i can hear you now hello uh yes sir i can hear you okay i think there is some uh, slight lag i think probably in typing it will get fine so uh yeah. see, uh, thank you so much uh, piyush for joining us today and taking out time uh you know to talk about the experiences and uh, your journey uh for everyone i'll just take a moment to introduce you uh piyush is i have known him for a long time for 10 years now uh, we studied together in our undergrad days and uh, we both uh, also passed out from iim bangalore uh he's currently in the other group uh, he also interned there and received the ppo and was also awarded the intern of the year uh and so you know he's a college proud uh, as well uh, he is also in the uh, leadership program uh, and uh, uh, you get to know more about his journey and his experiences in the due course of the webinar today uh, he was also the ex president of the student affairs council so yeah quite a multifaceted faceted uh, uh, you know uh, experience he has had so thank you once again for joining us um, uh, we will structure the conversation today in following way uh, we will have four sections that we'll cover upon first we'll mostly to learn more about uh, general management what exactly is the role uh, what kind of um, uh, skills are the recruiters looking at second will be more about uh, piyush's uh, learnings and experiences and uh, the third will be to talk about uh, what how can you prepare uh, for a role in general management and the fourth section will be more on the recruiter's perspective so we'll touch on these four sections uh, today please. and uh, yeah and i think uh, we we'll, along the way we'll also have some myths which will be busted on the management so yeah let us let us uh, start with uh, heading the first section we will we'll, we'll take these four sections for around 45 and then we'll get up to any question answers which are there with the audience has meanwhile uh, guys who have joined in in case you have you have any questions 
uh, which you want to ask, uh, please feel to write it in the comment section, and we'll take it up. Uh, uh, you know, in between or during that section. So, yeah, let us begin. So, Piyush, uh, coming to the first section to know more about what general management is. Um, the first and most obvious question I'll ask is, what is general management? Or what does the role in general management look like? Surely, Sahil. Thank you for the introduction. Um, okay, so you know, general management. I would exactly classify that as a focused program, where the entire goal is about how do we give an experiential uh, atmosphere to any joiny who gets a chance to understand what it is like to work with different businesses, different functions, so that the overall goal would be as we progress, uh, probably you know. like two or three years down the line we get an experience in different areas and then we find the right skill set or get to know where exactly our passion lies in so that's all about in short about general management program i would okay. i would be more as you know uh, leadership and everything all that because frankly i believe every role that you take in in your life there is a bit of leadership uh, element in that and it is not only specific to genman roles so i would really like to avoid the word using leadership as such in particular to general management role right so uh, please so you mentioned you know it is a broader role up front and then over the period of time you go into more uh, specific role in the organization uh, so but to begin with if someone wants to enter this role what are the skill sets required to work in that thing well uh if you talk about skill set you know i wouldn't say it's more of a technical skill set that you are looking into in this field but it is more like interpersonal communication or you know the life skills that we generally talk about every now and then people say that okay your communication needs to be good you need to be uh, very effective in how you present yourself so mm-hmm. these are broadly the ways i think which uh, definitely is someone that uh, m- makes you know a, a place better than what you actually look for this kind of a role uh but apart from that is just that uh, a bit on negotiation a bit on like how do you maintain your key stakeholders i th- i think uh, apart from this there is one other thing about maintaining and building relationship with your key stakeholders that is something which is a must in roles like this or else i wouldn't say there is anything as specific as you know you should be having a particular finance skill or marketing skill that all you learn on the way so there is no such prerequisite as i would uh, recommend on this particular thing sure so so to summarize the it is more about um, the software skills uh, that are more important how you work in the team and how you uh, because i think a lot of yeah. different departments and teams you interact with so how to build relationships is very important otherwise you sort of learn on the on the job so Absolutely. um the industries or domain you uh, you know Uh, in such roles are popular or what are the kind of firms which hire such roles you know if if we really talk about core general management roles right i would say core general management roles given the nature of what it is having to offer to us we would really find that in the manufacturing domain as such in india i would say now why manufacturing because then you have this end to end production and supply chain mechanism which facilitates the entire program of general management for example let's say let's talk about aditya birla group or let's talk about uh, the tata or the reliance or or even mahindra and mahindra these are the you know the pinnacle of all the general management programs that we right. have in the country today what do you see then one particular trait in all of them is all of them are strictly based out of manufacturing and of course a part of it is also into the services but without manufacturing what lacks is really the fact that you won't have an end to end supply chain or an operation based model and hence you might not have the entire learning experience that i was talking about right from procurement right from right. supply chain right from uh, logistics marketing sales and then consumer insights customer building customer relationships everything so if you really ask me in crisp it is the manufacturing domain that holds the forte of all these general management programs right so yeah i think very good insight and uh, so uh, we see more of such roles where there is a large say a manufacturing uh, uh, presence or somewhere in the sort of the uh, the industrial landscape they might also have other industries but predominantly this started and is more prominent in the manufacturing space yes. uh, so pius i think you you worked uh, you have interned there at abg and you uh, recently started working there also 
uh, can you throw some light on what does a project or uh, life cycle look like like how does sample project be like Uh, typically i would say a project would be broadly classified into two things right for me as far as i remember so it's either an internal project which means everything and everything is about uh, improving the efficiency or the quality or the processes inside the firm or else you go out and uh, write about the consumer itself which means is an external project right now right. both of them have their own details have their own uh, timelines but typically i would say that it is quite possible that any project could be as short as 2 months and it could go as long as 2 years depending upon who is the consumer that you are facing for example let's say you are trying to optimize the supply chain within a group company or you are trying to uh, optimize the procurement pro processes of a company then that could be like as long as a 2 months activity whereas if it is about uh, launching a brand or launching a category of products it might as well go up to 2 years or even uh, you know somewhere around 2 to 1 and a half years or let's say activities such as mergers and acquisition that goes on for quite a long time before everything gets on paper everything is legalized so yeah that is how a broad spectrum of projects moves around and if you ask me what are the you know key areas where one can expect of projects definitely a lot more emphasis on uh, operation side definitely a lot more on uh, uh, i i would say marketing and when i say marketing let's not confuse that with business development because those two are completely entire things so uh, operations business development marketing nowadays there has been a lot of focus on strategy uh, looking at the impact of covid everyone is trying to understand how best can we increase our efficiency how best can we get into consumers and everything on that and then of course apart from that there are also roles something such as let's say audit and all these things which is pretty much common across all the industries right so actually you know very interesting to uh, to learn that uh this is quite a uh, you know a uh, multi dimensional role where it's not specific yeah. to one department it can be either internal to your company or external to customers and might range from a two month project which is say maybe on supply chain optimization to a new product launch which is maybe a two year project and anything in between as well so so yeah i think that sounds very exciting and um uh, since you mentioned about so many different kind of roles which one play how collaborative do you think these roles are and how much do you have to sort of collaborate within teams with uh, different te uh, teams and you know with customers yeah you know uh, as i as i be uh, began my uh, my uh, thoughts on general management i said that you know it's more uh, focused towards manufacturing yeah. sectors now the the core thing to uh, take note of here is probably you would be working somewhere out of uh, bangalore or mumbai or delhi where it is kind of an headquarters or that is the corporate office but your main stakeholders are all in the plants and plants are not in the cities right so i would say when you ask about how collaborative is the job i would say that is one of the most important requirement of this job is that can you handle people when they are not in front of you which efficiently means that sitting in mumbai can you talk to people probably somewhere in rajasthan or somewhere in northeast where you have the plants and then get to work on the project that you are being handled or being assigned so a lot of things you know right from the supply chain everything is very very dependent on how the other stakeholders are going to react and hence it is a lot more important in emphasize that we maintain very good relations and talk to them get them to understand what we want to do understand their pain points and it is all about like being in sync with everyone around so i would say you know it's not very uh, 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 exclusive kind of a project where you just do it on your own and then roll it off rather without having the approval from all the business heads or probably the plant heads it is very very difficult to get through a project and hence the key approach to all this be around like can you get every stakeholder on board and more importantly as uh, my previous managers have always told me how do we make the persons in front realize that this is not only my job but it is also as important for them as well to contribute effectively and then you know get the job on time because at the end of the day it's just not my targets that are being fulfilled but also theirs I would say a a more of an atmosphere rather than doing it alone. 
right you i think uh, uh yeah yeah i think that that is quite description and gives us a very good picture of you know uh, what collaboration is needed yeah. um and i think we move on to the next question which is uh, how is the work culture in a in the in a general management role and uh, uh, these projects that you mentioned how much ownership do you have in these projects at the early stages of your career no uh, i think uh, again uh, every every management trainee cadre who joins any program anywhere irrespective of whether it's a general management or not So, uh, Sai, do you hear me now? Am I still live? Yeah. So I was saying that you know, uh, I, it goes without saying that every role, irrespective of whether it's general management or not, the employee is expected to be the project owner or the product owner. Having said that, what is different in general management is that once uh, you join in this uh, management cadre program. the whole idea is that now you will be totally taking care of the segment or the project that you have been handled and here as i said because it is more of a collaborative effort even though you have to work in a team but at the end of the day it's all about like you are the sole responsible owner of the project and then whether you need to talk to a sales guy or a marketing guy or a consumer insight guy it doesn't really matter it's like you have to find your ways out and reach out to people with your own questions and hence they keep on saying that keep asking more questions keep asking more questions to yourself to the project to the stakeholders so that you will have full clarity and deliver it as per you would like to you know uh, probably uh, with with the kind of results that you have hoped before the start of the project so uh, you know when we say that how liberal are are the teams or the or the management in respect to the projects it's not about being liberal or not it's about like what are the expectations out of them they expect you to take full charge and then also ask a lot of questions involve everyone while you make every decision because let's remember one thing every decision that we make in the corporate is going to impact or it's going to be implemented in the plant level so while we might be the project owners or the uh, product owners but everything uh, has to be approved by the plan as we move along so yeah i think that that sounds like a lot of ownership and basically your decisions sort of will impact at, at scale uh, so so yeah i think that that answers this question fuse and uh, moving forward uh, uh, currently in this covid situation uh, do you see any impact of covid on this role particular or you know uh, do you see any long term impact because of uh, covid on the project ah uh, yes uh, sign you know this this lockdown or covid can be seen in two ways okay no doubt that this has been a tough time for everyone irrespective of any business anything that you do whether it's a service whether it's manufacturing anything doesn't really matter but then anyways life has to move on and then we have to find out ways where we not only survive but become stronger right so in that way i would say there has been a couple of places where it has opened up really nice opportunities as a firm for aditya birla group one thing i would say is common for everyone around in the world innovation right how well can we innovate and when i say innovation let's let's be very specific about getting digital how can everything that we were doing manually nowadays now since everyone is stuck at their own places at home how do we get them on one place how do we get the things moving so the entire focus on every business right now is how do we become more digital how do we become more tech savvy how can we you know increase our productivity and efficiency through that is there ways that you know pro- probably had it not been for covid this would have been at the back of the priority but now these things have suddenly come up and then we are being forced to think in a way that yes something which we would have otherwise thought that okay let's do it some other time let's not put focus on that so that is one thing that i would say that innovation and digitization has taken the forefront that is one thing second consumer behavior is one thing which is very very difficult to change while as a company we might want to do a thousand of things but until the consumer accepts it 
or the or the consumer says that okay i am ready to adopt the product that really never goes in well for the company now times have come into such a time that you know there let's say we want people to experience or enhance the uh, online or digital uh, store experience right on normal days people would have never adopted that very well you know the adoption is very less but now people have realized that you know in times to come that might as well become the norm so that way as well now we have a lot more freedom to try out new projects new areas new experiments so that we can set the standard and then from then on we build accordingly so that way i think we can see covid in a very positive spirit but i'm sure it has been a hard time for everyone and then we just uh, get along well and i wish the same for everyone here i think you answered that beautifully huge and uh, both from the you know company perspective and the consumer perspective uh yeah. we will be uh, taking few things back uh, coming to our last section for this segment uh, it is more like you know myth uh, which we want to know if it's a uh, myth it is or it is you can bust it and it is trying to a lot of other questions which people have asked is uh, do these general management roles require very high prior work experience well not really sir see work experience is is a benefit that you have which if you don't is not the prerequisite for any general management program now when i say benefit what is this benefit this benefit is basically that how quickly can you adopt to the working environment like uh, when when you have a prior work experience of 2 years or 3 years you know that things has to be very collaborative and especially in a manufacturing setup right it has to right. be very collaborative you have to talk to your managers you have to talk to your team you have to talk to stakeholders so probably that part comes easy when you come with an experience for for a new 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 journey or a, for a fresher that probably would take some time to uh, get that into the working system apart from that there is no such skill set that you know would be having an added advantage if you are having a prior work experience it's just that mentally you would be ready that okay in a culture in a setup of a corporate how well do i do i perform myself or how well do i have to adjust those are few minor things that comes handy or else this is an absolute myth that people only with work experience will get into a genman role i personally have seen many of my colleagues who are from iim bangalore who are from other b schools as well who have no prior work experience but are you know working with the same program as i am right now so that is an absolute right. myth no need to worry on that so yeah i think that that you know good for people i think you know, some people have this uh, notion that you know probably with a very high work experience or relative work experience in uh, operations is only when you yeah. have been a role but i think that really clears the uh, air there and fuse i think that you move on to the second section of this uh, discussion is focusing more on you and your uh, journey and experiences so uh, can you you know you you went on with av you got the pto you got the intern of the year award uh so you you must have done something very very right right so can you talk about your journey the, your internship and the skills you have right now with abg and you know how did you decide to get into gen how is the journey been so far so um, what i i would take this question in two parts first that it is important for me to express that why a general management program and then why abg of course uh for me i would say the main reason the flexibility that general management programs offer that today you have worked for let's say around uh, uh two years two and a half years which is roughly what about 24 to 30 months and then every 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 uh veteran of this industry or you know people whom we look after they right. do say that a good period of gestation or a good period where you have enough or a good time you have spent within an organization is somewhere around 24 to 30 months now what after that do you switch organizations well you know that depends what exactly our priorities what exactly our interest but that is where i feel general management has a lot 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 to offer you you stay in a role for 24 to 30 months or let's say 3 years and then you want to move to a new role or a new function then within the group company only you can find a lot of options and times are so dynamic that within 3 years every group function evolves in a way which you cannot even imagine so you are never going to have a scenario where you would say okay every function is the same what do i learn new year that is never going to be the uh, scenario in a genman role 
so that is what something was there back in my mind when i joined this uh, program and that is what right. pushed me every time to look into those roles and why are the bella group uh, the answer is pretty simple i mean that is the largest and the you know in terms of revenue it is the number one right now in india and then uh, it's doing pretty great and then we are opening up into new spaces new avenues so obviously as someone who wants to take on the corporate life after b school seemed like a pretty good uh, interesting opportunity so that's right. a bit about why abg why genman right uh, now what uh, how about my experience uh, with abg uh, turned out to be pretty well i would say uh, there were a few innovations when i joined that what the program is all about because until unless you be a part of this program you don't really get to know what exactly is this program because as i said the moment you talk about uh, general management people think it's all about leadership it's about becoming a ceo well the long term plan would be that i don't deny that the long term plan would be to become a head of an organization to lead an organization no doubt but leadership could be as small as like when you join the firm being uh, being you know uh, committed to your project being uh, being committed to uh, deliver on time that is also a trait of leadership so my experience with uh, well uh, i must say that when i joined aditya billa group leadership programs to do my summer internship i joined the group company called altratech and i was based out of mumbai uh, the right. role was pretty much about uh, procurement and the project was uh, more or less on that so uh, i i think it was more of uh, learning how do you sit in a place in mumbai and coordinate with what uh, about 50 plants all across india and then get the project on on board talk to the plant managers the plant heads uh, discuss the ideas and uh, needless to say that you know people with experience as high as 20 years 30 years the moment you pitch them an idea they are going to come up with everything and anything that you would have wanted to know right so the the entire uh, experience of capturing their knowledge i think that was one of the richest experience i would say when i was interning with ultratech and then uh, i mean uh, one of the other things which i felt is important when you work on these roles is no one is going to come up and say ki hey so you have to read so yeah i think that that sort of summarizes uh, right this uh, yeah a uh, lot of aspect to cover there uh, and uh, and you know i uh, thank you for sharing that journey with us uh, so that also covered our second question which was you know more about your project so you, you've given a good brief about your role and what division you sort of interned with uh, yeah. so uh if you drilling down little further what is this leap 2020 program which you are a uh, part of and you know yeah right how does one get in so uh you know for all this management cadre uh, uh i would say joinees there is this program by aditya bella group which is managed by the uh, corporate uh, team it's not managed by the individual group companies so the corporate team uh, is called the young talent management right so they take care of all this b school joining program and that program right. is specifically called as aditya birla group leadership programs mm-hmm. right so in that what happens is there are two ways to get into this program one would be if you join through the group internship program which we call as gip right so that is basically during a summer internship mm-hmm. and that is through uh, your your uh, campus hirings and everything and the other way is to for a full time offer so for full time offer there are basically three ways either you are a, a chartered accountant so you join the finance leadership program we call it the flp or you are majoring in uh, human resource we call it the hrlp and for everything else it is called the leap or lead program so as right. clear uh, the flp is mostly for uh, everyone uh, for chartered accountants who are like ca rankers right they get uh, directly recruited for hrlp you have very specific colleges tis in mumbai and then you have xlri and then you have mdi gurgaon narsi monji all these places are you know specifically for the hrlp now coming about right. leap lead though abg lp has this policy of you know they have very specific set of colleges to go which could be you know found out more in their website but then there are also you know if you perform through their competitions and you do well there is also a chance that you might as well enter into that so in that this program called as leap which uh, which is the acronym for leadership associate program so that is a one year program okay. where you join as full time joinee and you have three stints of four months each that is one year right, right? 
so what you do basically is four months uh, for every stint you work with a different business unit and that too in a different functional role so let's say in the first role i'm working with a strategy role in one of the corporate offices probably in the second stint i might as well go with another business company and work on a different role right so the entire idea is after one year once we have experience in all of these different domains we should be able to decide wisely and you know thoughtfully that which is the best place where we could work within the company provided that right. there is an opening provided that our resume also matches well with them the requirements so that is a good way to assess what you like what you don't like what are your key strengths so that is how this program is rolled about right Does i think uh, well? yeah yeah the few she covered yeah. it really well and sounds like a really interesting program uh, really to sort of you know give you a lot of exposure uh, coming to your more of the day to day work you Are there any particular tools, platforms that you require for your daily work? Um, um <laughs> I think if I would say Excel and PowerPoint, people would be like, "Yeah, so this is very common. What's new in that?" But uh, let's face it, yeah, Excel and PowerPoint are the day-to-day -day tools. But apart from that, what is uh, I think something that is very, very relevant that nowadays we are doing is uh, the SAP platform. the sap platform is so huge so vast and that is the power house of every project that's being run in any company in the world for the simple right. reason being they provide you the insights about how the company has been doing let's say on sales let's say on revenue let's say on imports exports so i would advise that if possible i i know it's not really you know people could do something about it prior to their joining but if you can have some basic idea about how to operate on a sap platform that will give you a very good you know experience about going on with the projects because every time you can't run on to your manager asking how do you download this data how do i retrieve it so that is one thing and the other thing i would say is the in house uh, online digit online or digital platforms as i was saying during this covid we are exploring a lot lot more on how to go digital how do we become tech savvy so you know the online platforms that everything how do we shift on digitally that is something i would say is a very interesting part in our day to day skills uh, apart from that there is nothing specific right. that uh, that comes to my mind at this point of time so sure. so pius i think you will not be the first mentor and probably not the last mentor to say that powerpoint and excel are required i think all of the folks whom we have sort of had a session with have mentioned these two uh, you know platform <laughs> they yeah, are really good okay. to know that the knowledge of uh, sap uh, sap software is also come in very handy in this role and yes. anyone preparing for this role will surely get some help uh, if they pursue that uh, moving on to the last question of this section pushed it is um, how does the career hierarchy or you know growth uh, in such a role look like what are the different roles and responsibilities as you move up the ladder you mean uh, within the organization Yes, within the organization, how do you uh, see yourself growing over time? Yeah. So you know, as I said, the first year is more like a stint-based program, right? So right. you would be doing your stints in different businesses. So uh, uh, you you practically join as a manager uh, now. Every every management trainee when they join, they do join, uh, and I think this answer would be specific to my experience with Aditya Birla Group. I I cannot really be sure how it is for other other businesses or other firms. but in aditya pilla group you join as a manager right so after manager obviously the next expectation would be you would be uh, someone looking around getting the post of senior manager then let's say you 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 uh, an ideal time that time frame that i want to look as i said everyone says that somewhere around 2 and a half to 2 years is a good time frame to understand your role to deliver on what's been expected out of you so as i said manager senior manager then you have the deputy general manager general manager and then uh, you go on to become the vp svp and then you the executive president and all those things but you know right. more than the designation that comes into play i would say that the structure of most of the genman programs is such that while your designation change may bring in a bit more of work experiences and uh, work uh, roles and responsibility it is equally important that you know the job band as well you know shifts in a very uh, good manner in a timely manner because only then you would see a good career transformation a good uh, career growth in in your professional life so uh, that is uh, i think in a way to tell about how career progresses 
and if you really ask me okay how long one can expect to uh, wait until they get the next promotion okay needless to say it's on the basis of your performance it's on the basis of what initiatives you take but i think somewhere between 2 to 2 and a half years is a good time to hope to you know get into the next level one should definitely aim for that sure so i think that gives us a good uh, you know picture of how that one process is grown uh pius and i think with this we sort of uh conclude our second section of today's talk and we move on to the third section which is more on preparation and uh, i think uh, we'll see no more um, uh, uh, action based on what the students can currently do so come a very basic question before we start to go to the role is why should uh, the students who are sort of you know probably in their under graduation or post graduation or entering their post graduation uh, why should one join or not join a general management role <laughs> a very interesting question i mean not join is very interesting as well and i think on, on platforms like this which is meant for guiding and telling people it is equally important to ask these questions as well right, right. so first i would take the question why join my answer would be pretty standard as i have been saying from the beginning lots right. of lots of opportunities i mean within the firm let's say a firm as big as the aditya billa group which has almost 15 group companies imagine the kind of experience and the opportunities you would get every now and then to try out different roles different positions you want a sales role you want a marketing role let's say you are very good in strategies and you are pretty well you have a lot of options and it just keeps on building every year and then the beauty part of it because you are right. coveted program like abg lp what happens that you are in within the big family of aditya billa group there is again a small family of abg lps right now who who are meant to be the you know working force in every different group companies so what happens is you will always have opportunities come your way when you talk to different people when you interact with them when you tell them what you have been doing for the last few uh, years probably so that is one thing why one should aspire to be a part of it and it goes without saying this is uh, probably co- a company where one can actually aspire that you join and then you put put hold for a pretty long time now this right. actually also brings into insight that why not join this company and i can be as blunt as it can be that if you are not patient enough for uh, the benefits to come out probably this might not be a very good experience for you and when i say this it is for all general management programs because see typically hanging on for 2 to 2 and a half years or 3 years for a role to become mature or for a performance to come out or for you to deliver on the promises that has been put and also the role, uh, the expectations from the management you definitely need at least one one and a half year to understand for what is happening and then probably 6 months or one year to execute everything okay right so if you are someone who wants to you know keep switching every now and then and then if you are really intimidated by your peers or your uh, friends or your friend circle or your batchmates who you know you kind of walk in a different kind of an atmosphere then probably this might not be a very good experience for you because then you have to have a lot of patience to hold on to this role and then say that okay probably it is going to take me another 3 uh, months or 4 months but yeah this is the intended output i want so i will keep holding to it so yes if you are not patient and if you are not you know willing to hold on for a while this may not be the area that you should look forward to right i think very very uh, uh, answered question a very honest uh, answer as well uh, and uh, so we move on to the next question and this is uh, a lot of people have been asking is an mba really necessary to enter into a general management course or can people enter through other streams i mean yes and no to that yes and no to that i'll keep it okay. short because you know there are few companies which uh, do have the provision that even if you are from the general uh, cadre when i say general cadre as in you are not an mba background you still have an option to go through to enter their uh, management cadre programs right and that is a very very i think uh, i would say long process there is a lot of evaluation in that or else the other uh, companies such as the aditya billa group you have to be from a uh, b school to be a part of this program so that you know why this is happening is because the objective and the output that is expected or the focus of this program is very very specific and when you right. don't have a specific set of people from a specific background it becomes very difficult to have a dedicated and focused approach to work 
so yes i would say for most general management programs it is it is important that you belong to a particular b school and you are being hired for this program on their campuses but then there are exceptions as well right so uh, yeah i think uh, moving on to the preparation part is well uh, uh, right now uh, uh, a lot of folks have free time on their hands because of the entire covid situation uh, they are at home and they are sort of even trying to pursue different things what how can a aspirant of for a gentleman role uh, utilize this time to do their profile productively or what are the book courses that someone can follow are you uh you mean to say how do they prepare when they are right now aiming towards this gentleman program right right so if someone for probably sort of you know i either in b school or entering into b school how can they utilize this time to sort of prepare more for the gentleman role yeah so i think uh, every gentleman program when they come for a campus hiring or any ways otherwise what they would want is to see that how how well versed you are or how ready you are with the market developments you know let's say i'm talking about manufacturing sector which is like again the core of all gentleman programs right tomorrow tomorrow let's say you go to an interview and then they say uh, which is your area of interest and you happen to say let's say cement and then they ask okay you tell me what's happening in the cement what's happening because of lockdown has there been any impact or not and if you fail to answer that that really you know puts you in a spot that whether you are really interested in the program or not so anyone who is aspiring or wanted to join a program like this my only recommendation to them or my only piece of advice would be you know stay relevant in the news and then learn what's been happening around and check if you have a preference for any particular company then it's really nice so that you get to know that what exactly you need to look out in this market if you are not still be very very uh, up to date with the developments that's happening around on a macro level may not be you know go on a micro level but on a macro level how gdp has been impacted by for a particular sector what what are the new developments i think that is one way one can be you uh, stay up to date for this kind of a process other than that right. i think there is not much uh, at this point of time so i think that should be good right so yeah i think just to summarize more on uh, a to read more about current affairs uh, what how are the industries getting impacted and if they have any preferences or you know talk to the, the top companies to who come to hire they can read about uh, how is the entire situation impacting their industry their company as well uh, so i think uh, reading more about the current affairs i think is the best uh, suggestion that you were giving them uh, coming to so you mentioned there are certain companies are uh, coming to uh, that front what are the most lucrative companies who usually hire uh, candidates in the general, general management role well of course i would go with aditya birla group first no doubt <laughs> but yeah. yeah i i would strongly advise that whoever today is attending the webinar they might as well do a google search on that you know every time for the last probably a decade and decade and a half there has been a, a minimum i i would say minimal list in fact a minimal uh, list of 3 to 4 companies which always features in the top 3 or top 4 and uh, right. as as one can guess it has to be the aditya birla group the tata administrative services reliance mahindra and mahindra in fact if you look into companies such as uh, bosch uh, th- those are few companies which has now taken up the space of all these general management programs so those are uh, i would say lucrative but in its own ways now when you define lucrative there would be many parameters right so there are many parameters right. that is available to say whether it's a lucrative thing or not but overall if you say these are the few top 4 5 companies which will give you a very holistic and a very good genman program if you really want to be a part of it right no i think uh, thanks for that you can this is really gives a good good perspective who want to apply on you know uh, where can they sort of focus their research energy and preparation on So I think with this, you know, we move on to the the last section for today's discussion, and then we'll open up to questions if any. Uh, this is more to do with the recruitment process, right? Uh, how do recruiters uh, come to these campuses and recruit? Uh, so for the people who are probably jo- going to join or are you know currently in college and probably will sit for laterals, or uh, or people who are joining in the 2022 batch who will be sitting for uh, summer placement. 
can you throw some light on how the hiring process works and what are the different steps in the hiring process yeah so uh for any general management role uh i i think almost every company uh do have almost similar set of practices now with a word of caution i must say this is all the pre covid era we are talking about post covid we're not very sure whether they're going to adopt into some other ways but let's 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 assume that is going to remain the same way it was before so every company begins their entire process with an inv- invite for an application which is uh, definitely along with the resume now every institute that you are being a part of has its own format has its own ways to build a resume but then uh, the key uh, take away here is an an application to be filled and then you have to attach a resume which would be then considered for the next round of selection right and then in that in between your selection there is also a step called a psychometric test where right where the entire idea is to see whether you are the right fit for the organization or not and believe me you have to uh, understand that the logic that goes behind this test is of merit and that is a way to determine whether you are a right fit or not so that is all something from your end that you do and before the uh, hiring on campus there are a couple of other things that happens one is if you are shortlisted for the next rounds so basically every round is an eliminative round right your application right. your aptitude test so uh, b- then the next step is about a group discussion a group discussion could be in any format it could be on a live uh, 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 topic it could be on an abstract topic it could be on an ethics based case it could be a case discussion uh, so it could be anything and anything and then once right. you're clearing this group discussion then you go to a personal interview round which is ideally i would say two rounds uh, one with the uh, senior management and one with the uh, corporate hr team and then there uh, that's the end of the process and then uh, you did well you're in the company sure so i'll just summarize uh, it starts off with your application it's like a general form where the company yeah. sort of wants to know more know more about you attached with your resume that is sort of the first level of filtering happens and then you sort of get shortlisted for either an aptitude test or yes yeah. case to the cd and then that is again a filtering process and then you go to the personal interviews where uh, that is again a filtering process and once you clear all of these stages you sort of recruited uh coming to the next question um what kind of background do genman firms uh, look for in candidate are there certain backgrounds they prefer over the other one um, no i mean this is not a yes no type of a question though but i i still believe that your application uh would be considered on the merit of what you bring to the table right so let's say someone has a very good experience on uh, computer science right if they have done their right. bachelor's in a computer science degree now if you say that what is the role of that person in a manufacturing company and then you think that the company is not going to hire that is incorrect why because of the sole reason of going digitized right everyone wants to be in the digital space so right. obviously there is an opportunity for a person who has done their bachelor's in computer science let's see some other example so let's say if you are a uh, chartered accountant or someone who has done their uh, bachelor's in in finance or some in other course and th- what happens in that is there are many many roles in finance specific to finance right so i wouldn't say that there is any such barrier or there is any such prerequisite which says that this is a must to have before you join this program it is pretty much a very open application anyone and everyone can apply although obviously i cannot comment on how the filtering process works or what is the selection criteria but i am sure on that particular time on that particular year that particular uh, uh, quarter what is the requirement of the company what is the requirement of the firm those might be the few decisions which might go into the filtering process right but or else i have never seen a genman program which has restrictions or which says that this set of people cannot apply that is never true so i think uh, in terms of you know application applications this is sort of the broadest we we get that yeah. these firms sort of hire Absolutely. people from various background and uh, there obviously because it is uh, you know a company say like aditya builder group or a data administrative services they have various divisions so all of these people yeah. sort of find their relevant uh, you know uh, division to or the function to work with 
so in that case i am uh, so you know uh, good to know that people from different backgrounds can apply so you take one question which is there on that is in fact, uh, in fact Shail, uh, i think i i think i yeah. should add in this current batch of our abg lp is who have joined this year you would be amazed to know that there is a doctor who has joined can right. you imagine a doctor in a manufacturing company then we have a person who has done their bachelor's in uh, computer science then we have a person who has done their bachelor's in aerospace engineering so you see the kind of variety that has come to this field and also not to forget the chartered accountant so lot of variety i think right. that is one of the benefit of all these programs that there is a role for everyone and anyone if you are up for the job then rest assured you will have a very fruitful time here right and i think it really benefits you guys also because rather than having very specific uh, field oriented people to work with you guys have yeah. so many different uh, backgrounds to sort of you know collaborate with and work with uh, within your team uh so we'll just take one question which we have um, in the chat uh it is by this gentleman uh, from who is joining i am cozy code this year and he wants okay. to know are there any particular courses or subjects that are very useful for the gen and role um uh, you know to take up in college ah um, okay first of all congratulations uh, to the gentleman who is joined joining cozy uh, code this year uh, and yes to answer your question you see typically in a b school when someone asks you what is your major you say on the basis of courses that you have taken and if you don't have an answer they will say okay say general mba then right so there is no need to worry there is no need to panic a typical mba program will have all the elements which is required for a general management course or a general management role in any company although having said that if you have a, if you have an inclination in any particular role let's say you are too much interested in marketing then you might as well take a few additional courses uh, in marketing if you are too much inclined about uh, let's say uh, operations or supply chain then you might spend a bit more of your credit points in getting those subjects right so it's uh, no need to worry but basically just follow the subject that you want to like there is no again I, as i said there is no prerequisite from any uh, general management programs that you must do so and so pro, uh, courses or so and so degree so as to probably get get an offer so there is no need to worry on that just keep it very simple do the courses that you like right so i think that you know covered a lot of other questions which we had received in the form and uh, okay. so very thank you that you uh, is that you know uh, in M- in an mba uh, usually you get covered to all of these different courses which will help you eventually so it's not really any specific course which will sort of you know boost your chances or something of that sort but it is more on what your uh, Just like, and I think the core courses yeah. which we have in our uh, IIMs and other B schools also, they sort of cover all of these aspects well, right? We have courses from finance to operations to marketing to tech. Uh, uh, so I think all of these things are sort of covered. Uh, moving on, probably we'll touch on this as, a, as our last question. Um, is uh, can you throw some more light on you know how the GD process and the interview sort of work? Are what are some topics or relevant questions that get asked in these? Uh, down you mean during the interview or during the group discussions uh, i think both the group discussions first like what what are they uh, evaluating and then we could have the second part ah, of the answer right. that yeah. true true that's that's an interesting question you know why because this 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 point that what people generally look when they hire is whether you are able to manage cross transactions and cross transactions is something very very common in a big conglomerate like this you would be sitting somewhere in mumbai and talking to someone in chennai over some project and then if there is a cross transaction you are not able to handle at the end of the day the project doesn't move right so one of the things that probably one would like to check you upon when you are going for a program like this is how well do you handle this cross transactions so that becomes a part of your communication and uh, uh, communication skills the other than that is uh, this obviously in care during the discussions right to have a how well are you uh, protecting the ethics part of it the values part of it because in general what happens is all these group discussions are aimed towards one thing are you sticking to your basics or not and that basics is all about ethics and values so generally it's about an user case where they talk about uh, the situation is something on ethics something on values and that's what we're going to be rated upon that is the part of group discussions Usually a uh, right. fifteen to twenty minutes exercise with eight to ten people on on the panel. 
right. during the day of the interview it's more about they want to know why do you really want to be a part of this program and if you are a part of this program what value do you, do you bring or what value can be added and then that is where something they want to assess that whether you are a team player whether you really have these aspirations you know i keep on saying 24 to 30 months whether are you stable enough or are you patient enough to hold on to a role for this long and then can you think beyond your own personal motivations can you think beyond right. and then be a part of the organization for a greater cause some things are these are the key areas that people look out for when they do come for this campus hirings and please i would advise everyone who is wishing to be a part of all these programs please be very clear about what the company does and what are the values because as cliched as this sound to be but trust me you will realize sooner or later every company runs on values and they have to stick to that if they have to perform and stay relevant right so please do um, be well versed of the values and core areas of the company before the interview i think that should take care of everything else right you yeah. actually is very well put you know i you answered all of our questions very beautifully and to summarize this question in short it is not just uh, the knowledge that you gain from your textbooks in mba but a lot of aspects of personality trait values etc are also sort of just in these gds and interviews especially in the genman role so for everyone who is sort of uh, trying to uh, you know get into this role uh, this is something to keep in mind and i think we have sort of just take two minutes for uh, before the session ends and i think we have wrapped up with all our questions and we have surprisingly covered all the questions which came up in our uh, forms as well um so yeah with this i would want to conclude today's uh, session to uh, a very uh, you know a deep thanks and gratitude from the speaker mentor team for taking out time and you know giving us so much of insight uh, helping out these students who will be later watching these videos to sort of you know how to pursue a role in general management and you know, also to learn from your experiences as well so thank you so much for that and thank you uh, sir no yeah thank you so much piyush and and for all the other folks who will be watching sigma mentor will be conducted more such uh, webinars and events going forward so please follow us on linkedin and instagram so that you do not miss out on any of these upcoming events uh thank you again piyush for your time and you know uh, take care and have a good day stay safe stay safe guys and i think it's a great job uh, ck mentor has been doing a great job in guiding people and this is probably one of the innovative ways where you can think and keep in mind innovation is all uh, there in the dna of every company so yes all right thank you sai for having me have a good day bye 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 thank you